Hello, so you're back in here again looking at my stove videos. Well, um, first of all, welcome to Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources. And if you're looking at stoves, chances are you'll know what one of these is. This is the typical rocket stove, which is a very efficient type of stove that people have been using for quite a few years now. They're about The design is about 40 years old, I believe. Um... Most of this type can only cook one pot at a time, as you see. They use a very small amount of wood. They burn incredibly hot, incredibly efficiently, but most designs that I've seen can only cook one pot at a time. So I had a little play, and I knocked something up the other day out of some fire bricks and two plates of steel and now I have actually folded the steel and welded up the corners and bought myself a little barbecue plate and I've made something that I'd like to show you so this and uh, tell me what you think basically I'm looking at cooking a full meal for a family on a bucket full of sticks that have fallen off the oak tree behind me so come on, let's go do it. Okay, so first things first, rocket fuel. Fuel for a rocket stove is all the stuff that you normally wouldn't bother with. It's all the twigs and small branches that would normally get thrown away. Air is what's important. Gobs of air. So that's why we've got random little air ports all over the stove to open and close and control the burn. Inside, it's lined with fire bricks, right the way around the outside edge, and it has a strip of them up the middle. So the burning chamber is actually a U-shape. It starts here, it goes around the plate, and finishes at the chimney. By the time the gases get to the chimney, they've cooled right down, all the smoke's been absorbed and burnt, and it's clean. Hey, let's have a look at some temperatures. You can see that up here by the burn chamber, it's at its hottest. Later on, I got it up to 250. And as we go around the plate through the burn chamber, you'll notice that the heat reduces. Here we go. So there's the hot spot. Now we're going to move around and up to the back and it progressively gets cooler and cooler till when the gases reach the chimney, you can actually put your hand on the chimney. It's about 50 degrees. Whereas with a traditional rocket stove, the heat is just insane and not very controllable. Right, let's get down to some cooking. Now as you'll see, having a look at the chimney, you can just see heat vapours coming out on this cold winter's morning. Down on the hot plate. I've started cooking. Look at that, we've got the potatoes boiling. The fire's roaring. Freshly dug out of the garden 10 minutes ago. Sausages. Out of the freezer. Nothing special. And I've got the jug boiling for my morning coffee on the back run. That boiled a few minutes ago and I've just moved it over there to keep warm. You'll see that the fire's licking along that front run quite nicely through the inspection port. And after I've made some air control flaps. I think I'm going to give this thing a coat of paint and put it on some legs. Look how much I've used. Or, well, look how much I haven't used. 
I also said before, new no smoke. The neighbours will love it. So there you go. That is rocket science. Rocket stove science. Have a look at other people's videos on rocket stoves. Learn about them. Very, very interesting how little wood they use to um, get the heating done or cooking done by moving the pots around you can control how things cook tons of room this thing is going to be so usable and the fun thing is while I was working on it a young man from Nova Energy came along trying to sell me some fabulous new electricity plan. Well, Nova. Now that's a nice name for a stove. An off-grid stove, one that uses no electricity and no bought wood, just sweepings from your yard.